everyone, it's Margaret with Creative Stamping with Margaret. I'm here today with two really cute cards that um, I've made using the new Butterflies and Flowers uh, layering decorative mask. You will find the, the mask in the new mini catalog. I keep saying new, it came out uh, earlier this month, so I guess technically it is still new, but it's on page 65. It's one of those items that's easy to overlook because it's tucked up in the corner, but as you see in the diagram from the catalog, there are six different masks that you can use, and they'll parts of them lay um, will layer. So I um, had ordered the mask, and decided to play around with them, and glad I did because I had a lot of fun and I'm eager to share these cards with you. So this, the happy birthday card uses the flowers and I've also added uh, some texture to it by using the embossing paste. So we'll, we'll do that card and then I decided let's get a little bit more creative and I have lots of glitter so I sprinkled glitter on it and I don't think it shows that well in the in the video but to see it in person it's a beautiful card and then I did sort of a rainbow effect using the flower um, mask that we have and used a variety of colors and then decided just to put a simple greeting on it. And I used the Amazing Thanks dies, which are also in that mini catalog. And they, it uh, just made a quick, simple thank you card that you could use. So I'm going to show how I made both of these cards today. So the first card that I'm going to start with is using the embossing paste since we need to allow it to dry. And what I'm using as my base is the, for the masking, is a piece of basic white. And I've used the large die from the Scallop Contours dies set that's in the annual catalog. Don't worry about trying to keep track of all the materials, etc., that I've used. I will be adding them on the blog. And I'll have a link to that in the description of the video as well. So what I like to do is when I'm using the paste, embossing paste, I like to set a silicone mat underneath just to help with some of my mess making. And then we're going to take our mask and place it down where we want the first layer that I'm going to do. Let me just point out on this mask, you have two different fl flower uh, sets. This lower set will layer atop the other, and actually... These also will layer, but I'm not using those for layering on this card today. But since I only want to color the one set, I'm going to cover all of this so that they don't, so that when I get carried away with masking and coloring or uh, embossing using the embossing paste, that I don't go stray with it because I'm going to first use our um, for the ink I will use a blending brush to apply the ink and I don't want to go outside of onto the card so what I'm using is just low tack painters tape is what I always called this but it's, it's a low-tack version that they've come out with, and I just like to cover all of the white areas 
that I don't want the cardstock, the areas, and the, the open areas on this that I don't want covered. So I've decided to change up the colors for this card. <clears throat> this first card I used the Highland Heather, and I've decided to try polished pink to see what that looks like on this. Uh, card. Thought I would go a little bit brighter. Let me just touch that off. I have some pink glitter, so I wanted to try that glitter. I have all of this glitter that I bought at a craft show a few years ago to use and never have, so it was time to pull it out and start using it or or get rid of it and let someone else use it that, that can. How many of you can relate to having multiple things, multiple products in your craft room that you don't use? So I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to save these tapes so I can just add them to cover when I add this embossing paste. And the reason I wanted to do this first is so it could we could set it aside to dry, and then I'll show you the other. But look, that's gorgeous just as is. You could just take and plop that on a card, and you would be done with it. But we're going to take it up a notch. We'll line, align this. One thing I forgot to do was to bring my container with warm water. After I use embossing paste, I always drop my items in, so I will have to step away briefly after I add this embossing paste to put these items in the sink, as I don't want the embossing paste to, to dry on the mask is that it will be difficult to remove if that occur if that occurs so now I have my embossing paste and I'm going to use a spatula and just dip in to get a small amount And one thing that will happen is I have not added any color to this embossing paste. It is just the white. You could add some, pull some out and add a few drops of refill, the little ink pad refill. But what I noticed was occurring is this over time, as it starts to dry, pulls some of the color from the stamped image, so that gave it a soft hue. So now we have that covered. So let's remove our mask. And as I said, I'm gonna step to the side and put this in the sink run some water on it quickly and then we will add our glitter but isn't that gorgeous so you'll hear water running I love having my craft space down in our basement 
in a unfinished storage area as I have a sink, a large sink down here, and it's great for all types of crafting projects. So now we're going to add some of our glitter. And as I said, I have a pink, and I mean this is a dark pink glitter that I'm going to sprinkle top of our embossing paste while it's still wet. And these trays, these styrofoam trays, I found when in a Dollar Tree, I was gonna pick up styrofoam plates as I usually use those. And now they have these little rectangle trays that work were great. They're a perfect addition to a craft room. Particularly when you're messing with something like glitter that can go all over the place. So now we have our flower that we have colored using the polished pink. I've added the second mask on top of that, the coordinating layering mask, and I used the white embossing paste, and then I've added some glitter to it. So we're gonna set that to the side, and we'll let that dry for a few moments. And while we're waiting for that to dry so that we can finish that card, we'll move on to the next sample. had to move that glitter out of the way or else we would find it all over the house. So for this card, which was the rainbow card that I showed earlier on this one, I used balmy blue. This is daffodil delight. And then, of course, I use the Gorgeous Grape, and I've just layered it, and you see where the colors sort of blended as they went. So um, I decided to change it up on this next card, and I'm going to try. It's going to be using a lot of really bright colors. Bermuda Bay, Pale Papaya, that's going to be our little softer color, and Melon Mambo. And for this, I have cut a piece of paper of the basic white. And this, I actually made it a little larger. So it's, it's like four and a half by, let's see, let me double check that. It's five and a quarter by four. So it would be your standard base. But as you notice on this card, I've added a black, uh, layer before I put it on the card base. I'm go going to do the same on this. I will cut this down, trim it down. I think that black just helps anchor all of these colors together, but it's easier if you start with a little bit larger piece. I have found and then cut it down to the size that you need. So we're going to lay this on our mat to make sure you hold it in place. I didn't do this with the last one, but I am with this. I'm gonna take a piece of this painter's tape and just stick it on the back, roll it up so that that adhesive holds, and then just so that won't move. And now we'll lay this across our paper, and then just along the edges, we'll tape our mask down. And the reason you want to tape your mask down is so that you're not moving your, moving it as you uh, use your blender brushes on it 
because that's how we'll add the color is using our blending brush, blender brushes. This is probably overkill on e on uh, tape, but I just want to make sure that it's holding in place. And I and what I have done, I don't think you can see this on camera, but the the mask is larger than my paper so that I'm able to tape outside that margin so that I'll be able to color all the way up to the edge. So we'll let's start, I think, with the uh, Melon Mambo. And I mean, this is so simple. It comes together so quickly. Just coloring and going back and forth and letting it fade. So that's about a third. The next color I'm gonna pull in is our pale papaya. And I just keep adding and layering this to build up a depth of color that I want. And I do want just a little bit more of this pale papaya to cover. So I'm just pulling this in, and there's no right way or wrong way on this. It just, it's just going to be a rainbow of colors. You could add additional colors if you wanted. And that looks like I've left about the same amount of area for the corners colors. And I set this to the side. I may need to go back and add more, so, uh, but I'll know as I start to lift one edge to look at it. So now we're coming in with our Bermuda Bay. keep adding and building the color up, letting it fade, letting each of them fade into one another. I believe that may be enough, just looking at it. And next, what I'm going to do is just lift the edge and look and see if that's, I'm satisfied with the way that that looks. Yes, I think so. I like those colors. So let me go ahead and close the ink pads that I left open since I don't need those at this time. You know what happens if you leave an ink pad open? Sure enough, the hand goes into it. and Or else I'll set a piece of card in it. I'm pulling up all of my work surface here with this tape that I can pull that this looks such a cheerful looking card so 
So I will pull the other materials over. So for the card base, I've decided to use the Pell uh, Papaya. find what I did with my bone folder, so I'll use the edge of a block to help give me my sharp corner here. You know, the name of the game is imp to improvise. We'll go ahead and add our basic black layer onto the card base, which is the pale papaya. over my little small trimmer and I'm going to trim off. I need to make take this to three and three quarters inch and what what I'm going to do is just trim off an eighth of an inch on each side so that it gives me somewhat equal amount of colors along the edge. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just, whoops, this isn't large enough for this, but I'm going to just sort of eyeball what I think is an eighth of an inch on each of these. I can take just a touch more off of one side because it's not quite even along there. I probably took off 116 looking at that. That looks better. So now we're going to add our adhesive. Love these colors together. And on the sample that I first showed you, as you saw, I had yellow up here as well. I had done a larger piece and then cut off where on this I did not, but you could do multiple layers. I was really playing around a lot so with, with this. So there's a lot of options that you can do. I've, and the nice thing about the, they, these line up, so once you, you, of course I've got it straight now, but you can overlay it and, and do larger pieces and panels. So just keep that in mind when you're wanting to, to do um, a masking technique. So for this card, I added thanks, and then I added some of the iridescent gems. For this card that, that I'm demoing, I'm going to do thank you. And as I had mentioned at the beginning, I use the amazing thanks dies. It comes with both the words that you see clearly, and then of course the background piece that you can use so that it embold, emboldens the, um, the look. So here I just want to use the word thank, thank instead of thanks. So let me just show you how I'm gonna go about doing this. We'll snip this S off, but I have found it's easier to go ahead and 
put adhesive on part of my saying uh, or my word and then leave the adhesive off of the area where I want to trim and then go back and trim it. I just find that makes it a little bit easier. added a dot too much of, of the adhesive but I can go back afterwards and after it dries and remove that so here I want to take my snips I just moved them to the side let me pull out another set And I'm going to first cut the one on top, so I'll snip that S, and then for the second S, I want a little of that black to go beyond the point, so I just trim around and snip that off with my the end of my paper snips. Now I go back and I will add a touch of adhesive to hold that K in place. What I used were some of the mini dimensionals to attach the words to the front of the card just to give it some elevation. Don't. I have some of that liquid adhesive on my finger, so the makes it a little bit more difficult to pull the backs off of the many dimensionals as they they want to stick to my fingers as well then once this is attached and all the adhesive is dried i will take an adhesive eraser to remove any stray liquid adhesive that, I, that shows up. Let's move this up a touch. And I took off the little pick end on the take your pick because I was using another 
part of it, so I've not replaced that. So I need to grab a something small to add uh, to that layer later. So I'm using the in color jewels for for some color on this. I believe. Well, maybe not. Maybe I will pull back the iridescent. Oh. Although this in color pale papaya looks good as well. So I'm just adding a couple little jewels to embellish it along the way. So mix those up. We'll add five to this. The last card I only added three, but I think I'll do five on this one. So there, you see how easy it is to create beautiful, simple cards using the layering mask as well as the amazing new dies. So I'm going to switch gears now, and we're going to going to go back to our first card that we did where we have used the mask to create the flowers. I added the embossing paste. It is now dry, so it's ready to complete the card. And there are leaves in the butterflies and flower flowers layering um, mask that will, you can add, whoops, there's the insert, that you can add to your flowers. You would do it as so. I opted instead just to pull two stamps of leaves out of another set. I pulled, these are from the In Symmetry stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp a couple leaves using the Granny Apple Green. See, the glitter is still, there's still a little excess glitter. Let me check that again, okay? We'll add another leaf on this one. For the sentiment, I'm using the happy birthday that came, that comes from the sweet ice cream. I love the font of this happy birthday and I'm getting into the time of year where I have lots of birthday cards to send. So I'm making, using that sentiment on a lot of my cards. And I'm using the Memento Black. For the base of the card, I'm using the polished pink, and I'm again going to add that onto a layer of black. And you'll notice with the 
purple flowers, I decided to add a few embellishments and I'll do the same with this card where I use the um, little brushed brass butterflies. Those are a new embellishment that are in the mini catalog that I really have had a lot of fun using. They're the perfect size for cards. And for the piece that has, that is our, our main piece, I have taken some of one of the, the foam adhesive sheets. This makes it so much easier than just trimming or cutting a lot of the pulling off and a lot of the um, dimensionals. This gives me the dimension Plus, it just adds a lot more stability since it has the embossing paste on the card. See how quickly that adds that to the card? Now we will finish by, by adding a few embellishments. I have a little pick that I can use to help. And I don't see that, so we'll just, oh, here, here's my take my pick. I can actually use the spatula and so we'll A small butterfly since that's like it's fluttering away. I think I'll lay, put this one here. One here. Let's pull this in this direction more. So we have our two cards that we used our butterflies and flowers layering decorative mask on. They just create some quick, simple cards using the mask. You can find all the details on these cards with the materials that I've used. They will be listed on my blog, so you can go and get that link. Plus, I'll add some of the, or add them as well into the des uh, description of this video. But a few other things that I wanted to point out, or at least one other thing, I was playing around and wanted to see what it would look like to do a butterfly with that glitter. This, I used the Memento Black. It looks gray, but you could use gray. There again, I pulled in the white embossing and then just added clear glitter. Fussy cut it. So now I have this butterfly. I haven't come up with my card design yet, but it is turned out just gorgeous. It's You really can't see that. I don't know if you can see all of the shimmer and shine, but it'll be a great start um, for another card. So I hope you've enjoyed this simple and quick, easy card to make. I was going to show the interior. This is what I did for the interior of this card. Just laid the mask to the side and then stamped two of those leaves. I've not affixed it yet as i still debating if I want to stamp a sentiment in or just leave it blank to add um, my own note later. 
but just a, a great tip for you. Go ahead and stamp if you're working with a, a stamp or a mask. Go ahead and embellish the inside of the card. Don't affix the, the interior, but put it inside the card so that when you're ready to, to use your card, you can finish it however you would like. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It was a little bit longer than I normally do like to t do, but I wanted to share with you a couple techniques for using the decorative uh, butterflies and flowers layering mask. Have a great week. Be sure to like this video, follow me, and if you would, um, check out more info on my blog. Have a great week.